Yes, sir, baby. On the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building. My first time meeting him in person. First time on the show since the pandemic on Zoom. Nick Caution is in the building. What's up, bro? We here, baby. Welcome to the show. What's up? Man, I love having you here because we've actually just been hanging out here for like 40 minutes. <laughs> before, yeah, I was, I was early. <laughs> before we actually started doing the interview. And it's just been it's been so crazy, like talking about like going from doing the Zoom for the last album rollout to now being here and, and getting to do shit in person and mm -hmm. for your new album rollout that we're, that we got coming up oh, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, I mean the whole it's crazy because shout out to Aaron Rose, but he was telling me like I, I've obviously seen your stuff on Instagram, but mm -hmm. he like connected the dots and he was like, Yo, you wanna go on the show? I'm like, Yeah, I'm down. But I didn't even realize we did the the interview the Zoom, already. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Cause I never actually met you. Like I wanna meet someone first before you know I, I consider them someone I know so once I looked at it I was like oh shit of course I'll do it but that whole rollout felt like it didn't even actually happen because everything was zoom it wasn't right like, I, I want to yeah. be here in the flesh I want to actually sit down and talk but I feel like with that with, with the anywhere but here album like it was still like a really good rollout at the same yeah, time yeah. you had you had a first of all you had an incredible project and a great great um list of features on the project with yep. you and like you did a ton of press ton of interviews I, I saw you everywhere shout out my guy kevin at audible treats Held it down. oh shit shout, shout out audible, audible treats, treats yep. they went crazy Hell they yeah. went crazy with you during that rollout yeah too. definitely i mean no nah, i have no complaints about that album it's just the the world was uh the world was the complaint like you know yeah you, you wish you could have done more nah it's not that i wish i could have done more i well yeah t i mean i wish i could have done more in the world but uh it just so like everything was just weird like you couldn't go places you, even like shooting videos was a was a whole thing but you know Music was secondary to what was going on, but for for what it was, for the time that it was in, it yeah. was you know I I thought it did great. I was happy with everything. And even after that, like you were pretty calm for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You post on Instagram every now and then. I'd be like, yeah. oh, I haven't seen Nick post in a while, and I would go to your page and I and I'd see what you were up to. Yeah. Did you kind of like after the after obviously the rollout and, and all that after that? Did you begin to just kind of like take some time to yourself? Or at least that's what it kind of looked like. To yeah, me. I mean, with everything, um, I don't know. I, maybe it's one of my downsides of of like being a rapper but like i never feel pressed to to always post like if i don't have something to talk about mm -hmm. you know like i i don't feel like like sometimes i you know think about it and i'm like oh yeah maybe i should post something post a snippet post a you know whatever it is but if there's nothing that i'm really trying to say or promote it i don't know i feel weird posting shit you know like yeah i, I don't it. i don't always try to uh make something just to have content out like i i want to have you know, lead to something, you know, now I'm gearing up for this album. So, you know, doing the video, doing a freestyle, whatever it is, yeah. I like to just, you know, do things that have a purpose or are leading to something. Right. Yeah. I, I understand that. It's it's moving, moving with a purpose, moving yeah. with a purpose, for a purpose. But also I understand like that, that could be something I'm doing wrong just because everything nowadays is so quick and, you know, one week after something's out, it's already, you know, what's the next thing or what are you going to do next or right. where have you been like I, I could i could not post for a month and people would think i'm fucking dead you know god forbid but like <laughs> god forbid, yes, but, but that's just like that's like how quick everything moves nowadays so but also i feel like you're 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 obviously an artist who has a fan base where i don't think that necessarily matters if you post all the time yeah. like i think that like you know now with like the 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 new generation of artists in new york and just around the country and the world etc like their fan bases have like very short attention spans right Definitely. so it's like they have to they consistently have to post and consistently have to be in front of everybody's faces otherwise they get forgotten for the next person but like you know you yourself like i feel like you put out a, an incredible body of work and your fans live with that and they enjoy that and then you know if you post every now and then you post a teaser every now and then like yeah. your fans aren't going anywhere they're still going to stay with you because they already are used to that side of you they're not expecting you to drop every week or anything like not that. for for sure and that's uh you know by the grace of whatever higher power i something i've been blessed with but um right. yeah like and that's the thing too with with the last album you know anywhere but here i'd I put a lot into that. That was a lot of my real life into that. You know, I was coping with the loss of my father mm -hmm. and the the album I had dropped before that, my last solo album was Disguise the Limit. And that was like five years before. And I never want to take that type of break, but you know, I did Nick at Night in between and a couple uh, like the Beast Coast album and stuff like yep. that. But in that time period, I had to learn about the game and like the certain, like with deals and shit and not being able to do certain things and you know not having the 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 right way to put something out the way you envision it mm -hmm. you know that was like a whole learning process so when i dropped the sky's limit my my father had passed like right before it came out 
but he was alive for like the whole uh, making making of, of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So from that 2016 to 2011 or 2011 to 2021, <clears throat> that was five years worth of music and thoughts put into anywhere but here. You know, coping with that loss and mm. the song December 24th, the first song. That's that's my dad's birthday, and I wrote that song on like his birthday two years after he passed. So it was just a very emotional, um, like therapeutic project for me. Like it started as this, uh, like ther like therapy for me. It started as just like a diary, and it became, you know, this whole body of work that came out during COVID. Like ironically, you know, it's mm -hmm. called Anywhere But Here. That was the name I had for forever, and then uh, you know, COVID happened, and like. Anywhere but here was, I feel like, a, a hive mind, uh, the way everyone thought. That nobody wanted to be where they were at. Everyone was stuck home. Everyone was trapped in. So, you know, I never feel pressed to overdrop stuff because I put so much into that, and I hope it, like, speaks volumes. Right. Yeah. You had, if, if memory recalls, you had, like, some skits on there, too. You had some audio yeah. in the, yeah. on there as well. Those were all clips from my dad that I yeah. just put on it just to, like, keep him, like, he is, like, the glue of that project. You know, I was talking about him, but then there's other songs where... You know, I didn't want the whole thing to be sad or the whole thing to be, uh, you know, this like sob story. The whole point was to start where, 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 like where I was at when when it all happened, and then you know me getting out of this pit I was in. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I I, kept, I wanted to keep him on it. You know, I wanted to keep him like a part of the project. Right, and yeah. kind of, and also uh, immortalize him in through the music, exactly. through through. Um, do the little audio bits that we mm -hmm. injected into the project, things like that. Yeah, hundred percent. But you did have like a lot of upbeat records on there, and like I said, you had like a great, obviously, list of features. I know when we did the Zoom, we spoke about you know the Denzel Curry, Coda, yeah. so on and so forth. Obviously, a bunch of the Pro Era guys were also on, also yep. joined you on the project. Um, and I, I think overall, like you really like for a project that you waited, you know, what was it like four or five years yeah, to put out? Yeah. Besides the, the the Nick at Night project, mm -hmm. um, I feel like it really did exactly what it was supposed to. I agree. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. like it was like you know, people have been waiting so long to hear from you, and obviously you know they like I said they got the Nick at Night, they got the Beast Coast stuff, but then like when they really got to like kind of tap back in with you and kind of see where you've been at, because I think that oftentimes when 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 I get to talk to you know like you, the Aaron's, the Desi's, like you know I'm sure that like people like me who were fans of you guys, it's like okay I want to know what they're doing now. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And like it's not always with certain artists that you get that follow up and that follow-up is exactly what you kind of wanted to hear from the artist. Yeah. So I think from a perspective of like a fan and perspective of like your fans, when you put that project out, it's pretty much you're, you're telling the people like where you've been at, what you've been dealing with, but also like you also are giving them music that they can enjoy outside of the story that you're also trying to tell. And I, and I think that's the, you know, that's the thing with music. It's like, you gotta think about like listening environments. Like not everyone's gonna want to, listen to some sad deep type shit but it's important too so i want that in there and mm -hmm. i also want the up tempo stuff too because also like i love performing I, I feel like i have a really good show so if my whole album is you know introspective um sad stuff what am i going to perform you know like <laughs> it it's just not yeah. gonna, it's not going to work for me like i know how you know i'm going to want to want things to look so yeah i think that that's what makes a great album i think if you look at all the great albums in time, there's something for everything, you know, there's, yeah. I, I remember, I don't know the exact quote, but like Jay-Z, um, you know, like the singles for the radio or whatever it is. And then once people buy into this single or they buy into this record that is played on the radio or is streamed a million times, a billion times, that brings them into the album where you could, you could say whatever you want. You could give them like the, the stuffing, you know, like give them like the, the real shit. So yeah. I, I, you just need a little bit of everything, and you perform that role in Loud New York. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So when you, on the on the topic of performing, yeah, um, I didn't get to catch you. I wanted to. I was tight that I couldn't because I was just. I, I wish my guy Nick was here. We were doing so many interviews backstage, but I remember I was like, oh damn, Nick Caution is performing. I gotta go see him. Yeah. But since I didn't get to see it, how how was that for you? Kind of that being your first time. Uh, it back? was it was crazy. I mean, I feel like I picked off picked up right where I left off. Like I I felt good on stage. Um, I sounded good. Uh, that's the thing too with performances nowadays. Everybody does the the MP3 version. Like I, I did it without the the vocals, so like it's just the track and you can hear it. Like I, I get why people do it nowadays, but I don't know. I, I, it's not my favorite thing. I like being able to be heard over 
the actual song and not like clash with my vocals and but it sounded good it, it sounded really good i went in the crowd um and it was sick S shout out static selector my dj shout out static selector yeah. um when it came to the performance wise was that like that obviously that was your first like solo performance in a while mm -hmm. but because i'm trying to remember like before the pandemic did you have any like solo performances right before that like i'm trying to think about how long it really we did the was. beast coast uh tour but that was with like that was like with everybody but, but no nah, but i had my own set on that tour okay, okay so on that tour i had my own set and then we all came out for the beast coast set but that ended i think that ended like july 2019 okay so that was literally two two, like two, two years two years since you yeah. had done something like that yeah so it was like four or five months right before covid started I, I i did one other thing with the zombies in october of 2019 but um yeah so but still like, two years later yeah, yeah two years later yeah was it was it weird kind of like getting back into that into that groove or did it just like when you hit the stage it was just like natural yeah like, now when i hit the it. stage i felt good okay I, I would say like the days leading up to it i was a little nervous or you know i had some nerves but once I hit the stage, I felt good. And I had like the in-ears in, so like I couldn't really, all I heard was myself and the music. So it felt good. Dope. And then I did Red Rocks two days later with uh, with the Zombies and Earl. Who else was on that? Zombies, Earl, Tizo, Touchdown, Reason. It's a great lineup. Yeah, it was sick. And uh, I'm Red Rock is where? In Denver. Oh, in Denver. Oh, so yeah. you literally just like, you went across the country yeah. right after that. That's mm -hmm. dope. The next day I flew out to Denver. And that was like, I don't know if you've ever seen Red Rocks, but the way mm -hmm. the the stadium is set up it's like the stage and it's a, it's a, like a natural amphitheater so the crowd is it's like a stadium type crowd so the it goes up so the stage is like floor level and then the crowd is all goes up above like you wait this, oh i saw it on twitter the other yeah. day actually yeah, yeah 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 and i did that two days later and and that was crazy it's like a natural it's like a very natural looking thing it's right? like in between rocks like if you see it the yeah. stage is made in between this this whole like rock sculpture type thing and then there's hiking out there and uh that was my second time doing Red Rocks, and it was crazy. That yeah, no, I I didn't know. I literally did not know about that venue till somebody posted about it on Twitter the other day, and I'm like, this shit looks incredible. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like that. I think it's more meant for <clears throat> for bands and like uh, like I'm pretty sure like the Rolling Stones, like all these guys, like they yeah, do that. Yeah. It's not meant for rap shows because you know rap shows are rowdy and like you need a pit. <laughs> That's the yeah. one thing that I mean I love that venue, but the one takeaway I have from it is there's no. Pit. like there's nowhere there's nowhere for people to have fan interactions yeah actually, like yeah. they kind of just got to stand on their their bench and like they can't jump in that like you'll fall if you start jumping <laughs> but even there yeah. since there was no pit i just ran into the crowd and like ran up the steps like i ran up the steps and was just i don't even know what the fuck what's I was it doing. with you running and running into the crowd <laughs> i gotta do something i gotta you were too excited to be back yeah just but I, I always do shit like that i like to like have a moment in my show where i'm in the crowd and mm. just touch the people Dude, I love um, when I was going on your Instagram. I love um, your birthday post when you cut off all your hair, and yeah. like everybody was in the comments, like, "Oh my god!" They're like, "He finally did it! He did it! He yeah. did it!" What was? I mean, I know that's like a random thing to talk about, but I thought it was such a it was such a funny no, like the, comment yeah. section. I mm -hmm. was like, "What was the decision to to chop it all off?" Well, I mean, I feel like I had a good run. The hair was cool, and then after a while, it was just like it was hard to maintain. Like it was always. Like, I feel like it was, like, dead. Like, part of my hair was dead. Okay. And I wasn't good with, like, the upkeep of it. And then I would just get annoyed, like, having to take care of it. And I just had it for, like, five, six years. And I was like, fuck it. I had enough. New Nick Caution era. Yeah, just, we like, here. Yeah, next phase. I want to get back into acting again, too. You know, cut the hair. Oh, where are you getting back into acting? Yeah, I used to act in high school. That was, like, the first thing I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did, like, an independent movie. It was on Netflix back in the day um, in 2012. And then I kind of just put it to the side because, you know, rapping started taking off mm -hmm. and I wanted to put all my attention to that. But the first thing I wanted to do was was to act. Wow. That was really the first thing I wanted to do. So, you know, I'm like slowly getting back into it, but also just like a new phase. Like I cut the hair, you know, just mm -hmm. a lot of things have changed. So I had to change the look too. So what are you doing with acting right now? You got any auditions? You working on anything? I, I've had a few auditions, but I'm working on like, a script that I'm writing, but uh, it's still in the early stages. You know, I, I haven't done much yet, but I'm getting more into it. I did some auditions during COVID. I still have my hair, but then, you know, I didn't. I didn't love those type of um, the at home audition tapes. It, it's like a little weird. It is weird, yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm also just not that good at it yet. Maybe I don't have the format. Like I was doing it. I didn't even have the white wall behind me. It was like my living room behind me. So I feel like they saw that and thought I was like an amateur. 
But um, yeah, I want to write something. Um, what are you I, writing right now? Like, what is like what's kind of like the? I have this idea for this idea. show. It's based on. It's loosely based on like a halfway house. So. The uh, halfway house, like um, like the drug halfway house. Okay. So there's like a jail halfway house and a drug halfway house, and it's loose, loosely based on that um, that world. I feel like it's never been touched on. Maybe it has, and I just don't know. Mm. But um, I come from a neighborhood where a lot of people did drugs, and you know, some people passed away, mm -hmm. and some people, you know, go to rehab and they change their lives. So there's just so many different uh, like angles that you could touch on in that, and I think it's a uh, untouched story that needs to be talked about and, and i want it to be like right. funny too i want it to be like a light type of thing but it's a little idea i have find right. it find it some type of way to make it funny but also serious at the same exactly time. and i feel like a lot of good tv is like that um it's light but then it gets shit gets real and then mm. you know you, that's kind of what life is right i kind of hope to see that come to like fruition one day yeah i'm working on it i mean it's still in the early stages but hopefully hopefully we get that done when you were posting like when we were talking about like you post every now and then and whatnot like you have posted some snippets over um during the i think it was this past year and it was actually someone who i had on my show he was actually one of the first freestyles we did on the show lou from paradise oh yeah uh, so i wanted to I, shout I, I, out lou shout out to, first of all shout, shout out, out lou. to lou my um, boy lewis lou uh, what, what? <laughs> not lewis i was just talking to him the other day so that's why i found it funny when i was scrolling and i was like oh shit um how do you how did you and lou what's that what's that relationship how'd that come uh, honestly i don't even know how it really started but i definitely like heard his name in the in the past but I, I don't think i really heard his music yet and then um aaron was posting his shit mm, okay and i was watching the videos and i was like this dude is fucking crazy mm. so he posted like one two three like they were consistently all really good and then after like the second or third one i was like yo fuck it and i, I hit him up and he ended up like he had listened to our music in the past and um we made a song and then we shot the video, which I still have the video. He's pressing me to drop it, but I'm trying to like drop it in a. I have like a plan to how so I want to drop it. No, nah, it's on the next one. Oh, it's on the second album. The okay, second we're one. gonna get to that in a second. We'll get to that. But uh, <laughs> I pulled up on him to shoot the video in the city yeah. with Revenant. Shout out Revenant. Yep. And we shot it in like two hours, and I felt like I knew Lou forever. Like he felt like a person. Like the way we joked and the way he was, I, I felt like I already knew him. And that was the first day I actually met him. Really? Yeah, and, and he was mad cool. And like, we talk all the time. Like, that's my boy. And he's fucking crazy. Like, one of the best rappers, for sure. Yeah, for real. Like, he's, he he he's be nuts. sending me drill shit. He be sending me like, like boom bap he shit. He does everything. Yeah. He does everything. Lou is crazy. Have you ever seen his the freestyle that he did here? I, yeah, I did. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, I think it was on like the Alicia, Alicia, Rob, Alicia Keys beat. Yeah, Alicia. That's. I feel like I gotta do like a rappers react to other people's freestyles. You should. At some point. You I should. Just, that's yo. That's a good idea, right? Yeah. I might have to start. We might. Rob. Okay. Call it uh <laughs> rappers react. Lo to. Lose. No, 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 no. Fuck it, fuck it. Nah, fuck, fuck it. Lou, fuck we, got, Lou, fuck we got. We got. We got. Yeah, yeah, we got. Yeah, we, we got. Yeah, we already talked about Lou from Paradise enough, bro. We don't need to talk about you anymore. But that's it. I fucking hate you, bro. Um. Okay, so that's coming. So what, what I wanted to get to that, so we got three projects in the works this year, right? Yeah. We got the project coming. Um, probably by the time you see this, you announce that you have the track list, you got the, uh, the album art out. That's yeah. one with Charlie Heat. Yeah, Friend of the Family with okay. Charlie Heat. Friend yeah. of the Family with Charlie Heat. Let's mm -hmm. talk about this one first. Yeah. So um, we're back a year, about a year and a half. No, year and, year and some change later. Um, what is this project? How did this come about? How did this all kind of begin, this one? Yeah, so I knew, I met Charlie years ago through denzel the denzel song i had i've had for mad long the bad day song i had probably since like yeah. 2017 and um i met charlie after that and he had sent me a pack and we were going back and forth and then um after the album came out and bad day came out me and charlie were talking he sent me a bunch of beats and they were all crazy and he was like let's just do a fucking let's do an album and i was like all right it was it was like the most natural way of making a a collab project ever because he sent me probably at first he probably sent seven I think I did three or four of them and then he kept sending beats and I probably had like 15 14 and we cut it to 10 and it was it was just done in like two three months wow and then I went to LA to like put the finishing touches with him we added some production and you know tightened some things up and then I added a few features here and there mm -hmm. and yeah we just got it done like I just want to have a higher output moving forward. Like going back to the disguise limit anywhere but here, like yeah. five year gap. 
I never want to take a crazy gap like that. Like, I don't think anybody wants to do that. It's like an NBA player being injured or something. I feel like I was injured for those years. Like, <laughs> I was on the sidelines. You know, I, I was contributing to, to other stuff. But, like, at the end of the day, I, I want to contribute to me, too. Right. Like, this yeah, is yeah. this is where I got to put my priority. So, um, doing this Charlie project. And then also, not to cut myself up, but going five years from one project to another, I feel like I have to fit in so much of my life into that one album Sometimes I want to just rap. Like sometimes I want to mm. just have some rap songs and and like have dope production and you know that's what I and that's what I feel like this Charlie album is. You know, there's there's a few songs on there that are more you know introspective or whatever, but uh, it's just really good production and I think it's it's like good raps. Right. We have a single out for it now. Um, who else is on the project with you? Yeah. So there's two singles out now. It's Casamigos Freestyle with Kirk Kirk mm-hmm. Knight, uh, Vengeance with Boldy James, and then on the album I have. Uh, Meech, Michi Darko from Flapper okay. Zombies, one of the best rappers ever. Uh, and Ken Cash. Shout out Ken Cash. Fire. Yeah. Fire. So and how many songs is it? It's ten. Okay, so it's like you got like that like half half with features, half without yeah. features for the most part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a good shit. And then the album artwork is interesting because well, we'll have it up behind you uh later when you perform the, yeah. the single. Um, but the album artwork is like you with a bloody face and yeah. what's like what's the story that you're kind of I guess trying to tell with it? It's just vengeance i don't know I, I don't know exactly how to explain it but like i just feel like, like it's time to take the take the seal off the fucking pringles mm, okay <laughs> it's time to open up the chips do you feel like you're i don't know claiming vengeance <laughs> uh, like you like, no, like that man you know like i'm vengeance like, Ven- that, vengeance, that's is, the, vengeance <laughs> is the wrong word but like there's a song called vengeance but yeah, I, just, yeah, yeah. I just feel like it's time for me to you know have a higher output like you know that's the image that i chose for it but it's like i just want to drop more music i I make a lot of music you know i can speak for a lot of rappers but we we have a lot of music you know i I, I know my friends who rap we have so much music and either one like you overthink it and you don't drop it two you want to like curate this perfect album that like probably doesn't exist Mm -hmm. you know or three there's like label and these other issues but like i don't want to wait on I don't want to have all this music that doesn't come out. Come out, yeah. Because eventually years go by and the songs that you loved, you don't love anymore. Just because they probably got old, but like that could have been one of your biggest songs. So I just want to have a higher output. Um, I want to do different styles. Like I just want to have my shit come out. Word. Because I, I go to the studio at least once a week, sometimes twice, and I and I always record shit. Mm. So if you do the math of me going to the studio once a week for years and I'm always doing new shit, like I have... I have so much music, yeah. So it needs to come out. I can only imagine how much music you haven't even put out yet. Like, yeah, that's, it's it's. Insane. I mean, some of it's some of it's ass, like some of it's not vibe, <laughs> so, <laughs> but that ass song might lead to something better. Exactly, and like sometimes I'll take from a song that it's, that's a throwaway and it, it turns into a better song. So, yeah. So I after see. the Charlie Heat project, right? Yeah. Um, what's the next project that you're working on that you got Lou with? That's a that's a Revenant project, right? Yeah, I'm working on a project with Revenant. Shout out Revenant. One of the best uh, directors in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, me and that's another person who, when I met, I felt like I I knew him forever. Like we just instantly hit it off. And uh, originally, I met with him to do a video, mm-hmm. and he just sent me beats. I didn't even know he made beats, and it was it's similar to the Charlie situation. Like he sent me beats, and I did two right away. Like he sent me beats when I was in the studio. I did two that day, and I sent them back, and then uh, he just kept sending me shit. And we have six or seven, I forget the number. And uh, yeah, like the plan is to shoot the videos with him mm-hmm. and drop a drop the album with all his beats. So you're, okay, all his beats. Are you gonna do all the videos for? That's the plan. Yeah, all videos for all the beats for all the. I don't know if we're gonna do every song, but mm-hmm. like every song we do shoot will mm-hmm. be on his his beat. Fire. Yeah. And so Lou, that's the that's the that's project the that, that Lou's on. Yeah. Is anybody else already kind of yeah, on that I, with you? I got Shah Hef on that project. Dope. I got um, Chuck Strangers. I got who the fuck else? Remy Banks. Nice. Um, trying to think who else is on it. That might be it. That's there, it. For there now. might be one more, but there's no name for it yet, too, right? Lil Nicky. Lil Nicky. Oh, yeah. I like that. That's tough. Lil Nicky. That's my tough. Adam Sandler shit. I fuck with that. Yeah. I like I like that energy. So that's two projects, right? So then we got a third one that's gonna that's gonna come out eventually. Too. Yeah, I'm trying to have it come out this year. I mean, who knows? Who knows if it gets done? But uh, even if the third album doesn't come out, there will be more music. I want to drop more like 
you know, f- whether it's a freestyle or just some mm-hmm. YouTube shit. Yeah. Um, Lucy's f- for streaming, but I just want to keep dropping. Like, that's the plan. I think two albums from Nick Caution in one year is a big step up from for one sure. album from Nick Caution no, sure. in five years. I, I think, agree. I think that at, at least that, like, your fans will be properly fed yeah and, and i'm while. not and i'm not pressing myself to drop the third one right but as you shouldn't but it's just like it's basically done mm. like it's basically done so i might just draw i don't know it just depends if everything makes sense you know i don't want to do too much but you want it to line up properly yeah you want it to line up properly yeah for sure has it been interesting for you like watching like you know obviously from like the pro era era of like the pro era asap mob like that era of music in New York to even now where we're at with the um with like drill music or not. Like yeah. I'm always interested when I speak to someone like you, like your opinion of like watching how everything like just changes yeah. over the course of like, I don't know, like what, like six, six, seven years ago? Yeah, yeah, probably. Um wait, what what's the question though? What just like your opinion on like the change and like the music yeah. scene in New York, because it's like it's like very different obviously now than it was ten years ago. I'm not saying that it has to stay the yeah. same over the course of ten years, but just interesting. Well the way the way I look at it, I feel like it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy how it happened. So like, I feel like the two thousand like two thousand ten to two thousand thirteen, mm-hmm. maybe a little earlier too. But I feel like there was a rise of like, and maybe it was after this whole Kanye Fifty Cent war. I feel like when Kanye outsold Fifty Cent, it like shifted music into more of a like not the street, um, not the street rap was like the most popular music, right? So I feel like after the Kanye effect, maybe not immediately after, but then you got like Wiz Khalifa, obviously a little different, but like the J. Coles, the Cuddies, the Rockies, the mm-hmm. um, Tylers, the Joeys. And then um, as that gradually moved forward, um, you know, then there was TDE, Pro Era, Our Future, ASAP. There was this crew-based rap. Mm. And um, I feel like there was an era of like, not street rap being the forefront of um of hip hop of hip hop yeah and maybe there was and, like, and then there was like Drake like mm. just just from how I look at it and then I feel like Chief Keef came out and and shook the whole world like literally just shook everything and then Bobby Schmurder came out maybe I don't I don't know the timeline and then that turned New York. Chief on, Keef was about maybe like 2012 because I remember I was he, in high school and then Bobby yeah, he was 2014 was a, exactly yeah. and I feel like New York didn't like catch up to the to like the street shit yet mm-hmm. and maybe there was stuff going on I, i'm just not um i didn't know about it but i feel like once bobby came out everything changed so like the pro era still existed but i feel like the the more popular music turned more into into that and it and it makes sense like it's people who aren't even in involved in street or that culture like they love hearing about it it's like uh 50 cent america got a thing for this gangster shit they love it like that's america europe everything they go crazy and um gradually drill when drill came in i mean i love pop smoke like rp i think pop smoke is mm-hmm. was one of the greatest artists of the last i mean saying that de- probably the last decade like i, mm-hmm. I think his splash is like the craziest one of the craziest splashes i ever seen so i fuck with drill i mean drill is crazy and the way they they do the sample drill now i just feel like a lot of them say the same shit mm. it's great but i like um i like all the diversity i like uh the way the beats change but yeah it's, it's a lot of similar rap styles and stuff right but i fuck with it i fuck with drill it's more of like a feeling if anything I agree. Yeah, I and, agree. And it's, I can't be better than it's, it's the same reason. Like, I fuck with Yeet. Like, Yeet is is like a feeling. Like, I I sing Yeet song all the time. Yeah. And you know that's that's the the difference with this like the lyrical world and like the other world. Like, I could like all different types of shit. Like, I could be lyrical and still fuck with Yeet. Like, Yeet is probably one of my most listened to rappers right now. Really? Yeah. Like, I I bump <laughs> Yeet all the time. So, I fuck with Joe. Drill is fire. I yeah. just, there's just a lot of it. 
I think it's it's very reminiscent of me, like you said, like the street, like when so like street music was really popular in like the early like nineties, and then you get to the early two thousands, yeah. and then I think it's just like all that. Just it's like a cycle. It's a cycle. Yeah. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. Yeah, 100%. But like pe people and people, it's funny because somebody was in my comment section today, and they were like talking about like oh all the old heads are like upset at this music, and then all the old all the young people are like fire. But in my mind, and I I I had this conversation with a few people who were older than me not too long ago. There. It's like, bro, if you know, when you were when they were young, they was listening to Wu Tang, they was I'm listening saying. to to Dipset, they was listening and not and the subject matter is still the same. It's yeah. just how it's portrayed and like the beats are different and how what's being said is different. And then now we have social media. But other than that, the subject matter of what everybody's talking about is not too far off from the sub of how it was said in the past. And the and the main thing is the feeling. Like, yeah. People could talk subject matter, this lyrics, that, but the things that stay and the things that really hit are this is the stuff that has a feeling like like pop smoke was a was a feeling it was when i heard uh welcome to the party for the first time like a tiktok snippet it was just the feel like the, yeah. the video the way the shit looked the way the beat like it was just a feeling i wasn't listening to it like did he just did, did he have a bar did he have a <laughs> did he have a metaphor <laughs> nah it's like it was it was a feeling so yeah it's I fuck with it. I fuck with it. Yeah, yeah. I fuck with it. I, I would also, um, you know, obviously since you have the new record out with Kirk, I'm, I'm sure like the fans would also want to know if we'll ever get like Nick at Night 2.0. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Possibly. You gotta ask Kirk. When when he comes, when, Kirk, yeah, when Kirk. Kirk comes next. I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. But it, yeah, if it happens, it happens. It's not. It's definitely not planned. Yeah. I have music with Kirk for sure. I'm sure you guys have plenty of stuff like that's in the tuck already that you guys haven't yeah. put out yet. Me and, like me and Kirk are low key a production duo now. I make beats now. Yes, you were, you were playing me. Uh, you, you, Nick Caution is making Jersey Club beats, guys. Yeah, I'm making a little bit of everything. <laughs> He's making Jersey Club I'm, and drill beats. I'm kind of impressed. Not what I expected to get from you today. You know what it is? I got I got to get my drums better. Some of my beats have good drums, but my samples are pretty good. I what, pretty good. What you played me earlier, I, I thought was was super fire. And I have royalty free samples that I make myself. Ooh. So I got a little bit of everything. Nah, if you go, if I go on YouTube and I and the a rapper comes in here and gives me a drill beat, and, and they're like, "This is the YouTube link," and it says "produced by Nick Caution," I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. It might happen. <laughs> I know. I believe it's. I believe it's going to happen. Uh, Definitely within the. Go ahead, play a beat. Play a beat. Go ahead, I don't let's, know if, let's play a beat. Let's I don't play know a beat. If I have it, the, right, Rob? You want to hear a beat, right? Calvin, you want to hear a beat, right? We all want to hear a beat. Yeah, Nick Caution type beats. I don't know if I. <laughs> If I sent this one, hold on. Just play like you play like yo. Imagine he plays this beat and then this the interview gets copyrighted. I'll be so <laughs> mad. <laughs> I, actually, nah. Let me not even play. No, no, play, 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 don't play, play. Just don't play more than like five seconds. Fuck, of it. Where is this shit? Because uh, it doesn't happen too often when the sample drill beats get my videos copyrighted, and not like in a bad way. I just can't monetize off. Yeah, no, nah, we want you to monetize. No, yeah, yeah, of course. But like, I like, I, hey, I take L's for great art. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, it's still, it shit is hard. This is me and Kirk, you know. Uh, let's do I'm it. I'm sorry, Kirk, if if I play it and they get mad, but Kirk on the beat. I just wish it, I just wish it. Oh, these pieces will leave me. Oh, listen, yeah. it's up. Shout out X, RP X. Oh, this is tough. Nah, nah, nah. All right, right now turn it off, turn it off. Now, if you want that beat. You gotta get it from him, not me. Don't hit me up for the beat. You you hit him, Kirk. Kirk. You gotta ask Kirk. Oh, hit Kirk. Yeah. Hit Kirk. Hit Kirk. I just up. make the samples. That, hey, bro, that's it. So you do the samples, he puts the drums I on I got it. the ear, you know, I just hear it. I'm like, you know, change the BPM, do a little chop. What What are we going to, like, you got to get a producer tag. I know. That's that's what Kirk keeps telling me. I don't know my fucking tag. I don't want to be Nick Caution as a producer. I want to be something else. No, but you got to be Nick Caution because it's his shit is, it has a Kirk no. tag. Yeah, but he's always been a producer. True. Okay, okay that's I a good point. It's like, it's like Mac, when Mac Miller became a producer, he was Larry Fisherman. Oh, okay, yeah. Now you're right. You're right. You know, like he didn't. If he came out as Mac Miller, the producer and artist, yeah, it makes sense. Kirk was like Kanye West was rapper producer. Yeah, Kirk Knight rapper producer. Nick Carson rapper. You definitely gotta get like a shorty to do your producer tag. I know. I just like, I, I want it. I want like no, a no, different I name. I want like be. a different name. It just hasn't hit me. <laughs> It'll come to you. It's it hasn't. It'll come. It's, I, it's, been, I, it's been it's been a while. I've been thinking. Trust me. You gotta like. I don't know. I feel like you just gotta like maybe smoke a lot and then just like sit there and just think about it. Really like take it and be like, oh man. I, I thought at one point I wanted to be flying knee. Flying knee. Yeah. <laughs> like a UFC. Okay. Flying, and the okay. Tag, like, That's a flying knee. But I didn't like it. Like it was. Yeah, I, I don't know. For a week. I'm gonna keep it a bug with you, bro. Like, I don't think I like that producer. I didn't tag. like it. I didn't like it. Rob. Nah, it's not good. Nah, he ain't even turning it. It's not it good. It, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I had that name. Uh, There's no good name yet. There's no good name. I'm about to just go with my government name. Fuck it. 
No, nah, don't do that. That's, <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Figure but it so out. so beats from you on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I obviously I would love to see you and and all the guys get together, do some stuff again soon mm-hmm. too. You, CJ, Desi, I'm with it, Aaron. I'm down to rap. Maybe we'll make something happen here. Hey, listen, if, you know, if they come here, I'll, I'll be here too. Oh, I love that. All right, Kirk, you're next because oh, I got CJ coming right after this. But Kirk, I'm on you next, bro. I'm Kirk, on, oh, this one's my camera. I keep thinking it's mine. You're on. You're next. Kirk got to stop acting like he can't rap. Kirk can rap, bro. Like, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, Kirk, like he can rap. Yeah, Kirk is nice. Kirk is extremely nice. Kirk is really good. Kirk is nice. But you know, we'll make it happen. One way or another, it's gonna happen. If it's meant to happen, it's gonna happen. Um, so the project, do we have a date for it yet? Because I'm I'm probably gonna put this out around the time that it's about to drop anyway. Yeah, so April 29th. April 29th. So by the time y'all seeing this, remember April 29th, make sure you go stream yeah. the project. Um before we sign off here, we have you rap a little bit. Uh anything else you want to let the people know where they can follow you at, all that good stuff. This camera right here is all this you. This one? Yeah. Yeah, Nick Caution, Nick with a Y, N Y C K Caution, Instagram, Twitter. And I just started a new YouTube. You know, all my stuff was on the Pro Era YouTube. Now I'm starting my own shit. Um, Friend of the Family, April 29th. Lil Nicky, Summer. Maybe a third album in the, in in the, works. We'll in the fall, winter. And uh, yeah. Oh, shit. There you go. Go oh, subscribe shit. to his YouTube. You still on Twitch? Yeah, but not as much. Okay. Well, go subscribe to his YouTube. I'm on a hiatus on Twitch. Oh, I keep looking at the wrong camera. Go subscribe to his YouTube. Go follow his Instagram. Go run up the project when it's out. Go run up the freestyle. Go run up the performance. Yes, sir. Until next time, friend of the show, Nick Caution in the building. Appreciate you, bro.